spot out. This nice little point here. It seems like a lot of good rock. Seems like a good place to fish. We're gonna try this spot first. So I want to show you guys something here. This is my uh, vlogger's backpack that I have. And then look how I have this little fishing rod hooked up on the side here. This is an Ugly Stick GX2 travel rod. Ugly sticks are really just like tough fishing rod. But look, it breaks down into four pieces. And I always travel with this one because you can fit it inside your suitcase. And uh, so I'll put links to this in the description. But if you're like a traveler and you're going on vacation and you just want to do a little light fishing, nice little setup. So I'll put links to this if you guys want to check it out. Fits right in your suitcase, doesn't take up a lot of room. And you can do yourself a little fishing on vacation. I'm keeping this as simple as you can get it. We got a bobber with a split shot and a small hook. And then I have a frozen squid head here. I'm just gonna take tentacles off of it and use these as bait. Just like that, that little tentacle threaded on like a worm. All right, guys. Got to announce, of course, first cast of the day. Got one, got one, guys. Oh, it's a wrasse. Cool though. Look at this little guy. This is called a saddleback wrasse. There we go, guys. Little wrasse. Whoa. Whoa. He's in a little tide pool. <laughs> cool. We'll put him back. That is what's so cool about coming out here, is you never know what you're gonna catch. You catch a lot of local reef fish. You could catch, I mean, just there are the fish called fi a file fish that I caught last year. Um, oh, I got another one. Oh, another little wrasse. Um, I've caught squid before when these like little cuttlefish came. We came around to this one spot and I was catching squid off the bank. I've caught little eels off the bank. So you never know what you're gonna catch out here when you just throw a little bit of squid on or a little bit of octopus for bait. That one. Another one. <laughs> Three little wrasse in a row. All right, put a pretty nice little glob of squid on there. Let's see if we can get something bigger. That one. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? Five of five on the wrasse, guys. Got one. What do we have here? Rass number six. There must be a big school of them down there. Getting kind of ridiculous. Whoa, I see a big jack, guys. Holy mackerel. A big umua. That thing was like 10 pounds. He just came cruising through here. It was an omilu. I could see the blue. It just, it just kind of, it was so quick. I don't know if the camera's able, I don't know. Oh, there's a turtle right there. I don't know how well the camera's able to see in the water. Got one. Um, oh look, surprise, surprise. If I could catch a bigger one, that'd be great. But, oh man, see, this is one of those things, like it's rare that the Omelia come cruising through. Not rare, but like you have to be at the right place at the right time. And if I had had a small wrasse out, that would have been perfect. Got one. Oh guys, this is a decent fish. Oh, oh. Guys, 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 this is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. Look at this, look at this wrasse. All right, so I, I had a wrasse on and then another fish came over and bit it. Look at the teeth marks. Look at the teeth marks on the side. I had something a lot bigger on than this. Oh my gosh, that was crazy. My heart's pounding like something. I must have this little wrasse on just for a second because I, I hooked up. Oh wait, I see a bunch of big fish down there. I see a bunch of big black fish. All right guys, so I've been debating whether or not I should go back and get my big fishing rod and like get all set up for like, you know, big fish and then catch a wrasse and put it on a hook. But I have all my stuff here and it, it's a long ways back home. So I'm, I'm just gonna fish for reef fish for now, but I'm definitely coming back to this spot tomorrow or sometime soon. And I'm gonna catch some of these little wrasse, put them on a great big circle hook and, and hook them out there and see if we can get like a big, whatever that was that bit, or a big omelu like I saw earlier. So. Got one, on the fall. It's a tiny one, whatever it is. Hey, at least we have something different though. 
Look at how he has that spot right by his eye. That's cool. He's a toothy little monster. Reminds me of like a tiny grouper or something. Beautiful little fish. Let him go. Well guys, it's been a fun morning, but it's getting hot and I want to snorkel. So I'm going to go back to the place. I'm going to pick up me ancient. And we're going to trip, go do a little uh, octopus hunting. But I think I'm going to come back to this place tonight and to my, tonight or tomorrow and I'm going to put, I'm going to try to catch some little wrasse, put them on a big circle hook and throw them out here and see if we can get some sort of big game fish or something like that. But let's go octopus hunting. Hey, good. You want to go uh, octopus hunt? Or it looks like you've I been octopus hunting. Yeah, I would love to. Did you guys get anything? I caught one. He's a tiny one. Tiny one? So, okay. Yeah. So I got this brand new pair of diver's gloves. That, and they're supposed to be like cut resistant and all that jazz. And we'll see what I got them for. Uh, is they're made to grip a spear stronger. And uh, so I'll be able to, when I shoot this spear, I'll be able to pull it. Because part, part of the hard part is when you when you stretch this out as far as it can go and you grab onto the spear in your bare hands they slide down i'm finding out so these gloves hopefully will help with that because we're going out we're going to go octopus hunting but i'm also going to go, i'm going to go around the shallows here this is the spot where you uh, spear fish if you guys watched that episode um where i went like official spear fishing for the first time so there's a lot of good fish out here all right so when he first got the water I thought we were going to have to turn back because it was so cloudy out there. There was a strong undercurrent and it was stirring up all the sand. But once he got out farther, it uh, got clearer as you can see. And so uh, we hunted out there and within about 10 minutes my dad spotted an octopus and he swam down here. And grabbed it. No problem. Look at all that ink. It's amazing how much ink they have. And then he got away. Um, my dad thought he had it, but the octopus got away. And that is so common. They are so hard to hold because you can be holding onto a tentacle. And all of a sudden, they can shrink that tentacle down to almost nothing and slip through your fingers. So uh, my dad went down and he speared it here. And um, we had it for sure there put it in the mesh bag and within just a few minutes we got our goal of uh, getting an octopus which we use for bait and we eat them then after we caught the octopus i set out because i wanted to spear a fish you see my spear here i have the black one well the black one is really long and kind of flimsy and this was actually a spear we found we did not buy this one i found it laying at the bottom for some reason i don't know why somebody would leave their spear or how can you could forget something like that but they left their spear at the bottom we just found it last year uh, i'll link up that episode if you guys want to check it out and so i had never used it before or may maybe i used it once but i can't remember i hadn't really used it that much and so i'm shooting at a fish here and you can see just there's no power behind it and so i was and i shoot a second fish right here and i realized that the spear was too flimsy and it actually bend in my hand whenever i would try to reach up too far on the spear so i switched to the yellow one which is our normal go-to spear um yeah it's it's sturdy and uh, has a nice rubber band on it and so then i set off for some serious spear fishing and this is cool. I actually got really close to some butterfly fish. Normally, when you have a spear in your hand, they do not let you get close to them. I know it doesn't seem like I'm super close, but I was actually right on them. And they usually don't let me get very close to them. Uh, so that was pretty cool. And then I found this fishing sinker and I recovered that and used that in a later episode. So I was swimming along and I suddenly spied a goatfish and it had its head down. It was trying to eat something between these rocks. And normally they don't let you get close to them and they swim around the sand. Uh, and when you have a spear in your hand, they, they just don't let you get close to them. But this one was down feeding, so I sw quickly swam down to the bottom so I could sneak up on it and just speared it. It's a great shot for me. <laughs> Super happy with it. Um, about 12 inches long, they have to be over 8 inches in order to be kept. And as a newbie spear fisherman, I was super pleased with this fish. And then as we were swimming back, I was just about to get out of the water and I spied a fish. 
Can you see it? Because there's a fish there. They're really hard to see. I only saw it because it flared its fins a little bit. Right there. See how bright the little fins are? But the rest of it blends in perfectly with the bottom. I thought that was so cool. He swam under the rock. Well, that was successful. An octopus and a goat fish. We're just going to do a simple gut on this fish. Scale it first. Very easy fish to scale. Very easy. Watch when I rinse this fish off. All those little pieces come off. And all those little fish just come around to feast. That is a feast to them. Now for the octopus. He won't let go of this fish. I mean, gotta kill him real fast, right between the eyes. Quickest way to kill an octopus. Then I just pull the guts and uh, stuff, and especially the ink sac out. Like so. And then all the rest of this is good for eating and bait. And that is a job well done. Let's go up and cook these. So to prep this, we're gonna score it. Oh no, Hawaiian seasoning. For this fish, I'm gonna use something I've never done before. If you're new to my channel, I always experiment on my channel. Try to make each video different. So we're gonna try some Yoshida sauce. It's basically like a teriyaki sauce that's been struck by lightning. All right, we're gonna sample this. That would make good fish tacos. That would make good fish. That would make really good fish tacos. Oh man, it just flakes away. Look at all those flaky pieces. Guys, this fish is delicious. Ever since I was little and we came to Hawaii, my mom would make, um, we would spear all these fish, catch all these fish, and usually when we'd spear, they'd be little itty bitty like squirrel fish and stuff because that's all we could get. I guess things haven't changed that much. I don't know what I'm talking about. This is a good sized fish. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah. Anyway, and we, she would cook them all for us. And we'd bring up these tiny little fish and clean them, put them all in a Ziploc bag, and then she would cook them all in a frying pan with teriyaki sauce and then just leave them on the stove. And when we came up from the beach and stuff, we had a bunch of fish there with us. So that was good kinda, memories. Those are our good memories. So we've been doing this since I was a, since I was a little boy. So All right, guys, now the moment you've all been waiting for. We have three octopus tentacles here representing the three different ways we are going to try to cook this. I would like to take a second to remind you guys that I am no chef. This is a catching channel first and cooking second. And so, uh, yeah, so please keep that in mind. I'm gonna cook this octopus three different ways. These are all experimental. I'll, I'll just show you. So the first way we're gonna cook these up is boil them. This is salt water that I got from the ocean itself. And the reason why I did that is because that will give the octopus what I think will be like perfect flavor salt-wise. I learned from cooking up the octopus before is if you don't add enough salt to it, the flavor of the octopus leaches out into the water. And then the second time I cooked it up, I put too much salt in the water and the octopus just tasted like a big salty mess. So I thought I'm gonna just get water straight from the ocean and that will give the octopus the perfect salt flavor. I did this with Dungeness crabs. If you guys watch my channel, I cooked up two Dungeness crabs in water from the ocean and it tasted unbelievable. And I think that the reason was because when you use salt water from the ocean, it's exactly the right salt content for the water. So no flavor leaches out one way or the other. So that's what we're gonna do with the first octopus. And to the water, we're going to add black pepper, Old Bay seasoning, basil leaves, lemon, and some malt vinegar. And finally, we add the octopus. And according to an online article I read, we're gonna let this cook for about 30 minutes. Whoa, 
or until fork tender. So while that's cooking, we're gonna cook the other lip tentacle up. This frying pan will add oil, butter. I'm gonna cook this tentacle up exactly like I do a piece of fish. And I wanted to try that because I didn't see anything online for it, for just like frying up an octopus. And I love fish in lemon, butter, salt, and pepper, or lemon, butter, salt, and Cajun seasoning. And so I figured let's try a tentacle that way. Maybe, you know, it might turn out bad, might turn out good. This is all an experiment. Add the tentacle. Oh, that's crazy. We're gonna add some salt to it and some Cajun Louisiana fish fry Cajun seasoning. Flip this over. Mm. I don't know, man. All right, guys, this is gonna be it. All right, guys, this might be crazy, and it is. But for the third and final way, we're gonna cook this octopus. I just wanna defend myself real quick here. You cook potatoes in the microwave, you cook hamburgers and hot dogs and fish and everything else in the microwave why not cook an octopus in the microwave and who knows and maybe it'll like make the meat tender or something like that let's just try it I don't know, man. All right, back to the boiled octopus. It's been about 30 minutes. Ooh, and it is tender. Feels very, very tender. Take this out. All right, guys, here we go. Three ways of cooking octopus. Pops, I got you some water. Clacy, Clacy wanted to <laughs> Good idea. cleanse your palate. The moment of truth. I think we're gonna need some palate cleansing. This, all right, we're gonna start off with, right, let me explain the rules of the game first. We have the microwave one here. We're gonna rate these on a scale of one to 10. Microwave frying like any other fish, and we have boiling in salt water. We're gonna do microwave first. <laughs> it's kinda hard to cut the old microwave piece. Bon appetit. You can eat this, or you can eat the bottom of your shoe. It's really, really, really chewy. I didn't think it was that bad, but you you left the skin off. I took. I, I'm telling you, you, you cut the skin off. I took cut the skin off. You should try. Try it on the next one. You need to get rid of that. Here you go. Yeah, I'm not gonna swallow that bite. Might cause me to choke. Wouldn't want that to lodge in my throat. I am gonna cleanse my mouth. Can I get a toothbrush? All right, no. On a scale of one to ten. Well, z zero to ten. Zero being like raw eel. Oh. Ten being uku. That what was a six, expect? man. Six? Oh, yeah. Oh, but wow. I took the skin off. You took the skin off? I think that's important. All right. On this one, I'll take the skin off. All right. For the fried like a fish. Try it again. That's better, definitely, than the last one. That's palatable. I can actually eat this one. That one was just... <laughs> so I love Cajun seasoning, and that's mm -hmm. actually not too yeah. bad. I can see myself making an octopus sandwich in the future, which a few of you have suggested. I wonder if I cooked it for a little bit longer, if that would make it more tender. I've got we'll some see. ideas, yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll experiment. That. Yeah, On to the final way, boiling in its own salt water. Oh wow, that cut right through. Oh wow, that's that's really tender. It is. It that's is. That's really tender. Cheers. I love the texture. I can tell you that right now. Way more tender. The flavor. It's seafoody. Mm-hmm. It's um, it's good. I like it. I could put that on a salad. I could have a. It'd be good as like on a yeah an octopus salad. Mm-hmm. Octopus this taco. Yep. That's better. The boiled one, definitely yeah, I, better. I like it. Right. Mm. On a scale of one to ten, how would you rate that? 
seven and a half because yeah. the texture was way better, but the flavor wasn't as good as that. Fried up right. in Cajun butter and stuff. Butter makes everything better, you know? Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this little experiment here. We will keep experimenting until we we'll find good octopus, <laughs> waste good octopus. So, we're looking you, for a 10. Yeah, we're looking, <laughs> looking for it. We're gonna try some different things next time. Thank you guys so much for hanging out, and we will see you in the next one.